Hey and welcome! Today we are going to solve design hash map interview question. We will implement a well-known handy data structure, so consider this as a gym and let's get into it. Here is the only given example and we have a sequence of operations to handle. So here are the steps. It instantiates it, it puts these key value pairs into it, it asks for key of 1, we should return the value of 1, then it asks for key of 3, we might return minus 1 because we didn't store anything like that. Next it updates the value for key of 2, must be 1 from now on, we had 2 previously, and here comes the check for that. And finally a check for last functionality of this hash map, removing 2, and here is the check for that which we might return false for it because we just removed that key. So overall three methods we might support in which put might also act like update like in here. Okay let's see how we are going to implement this. Before we jump into explaining what we should do I would like to refer you to a video that I made previously about designing hash set since this is so much similar to that question in essence. But we will briefly touch the base concepts of hash function and hash collisions here too. So if you want to fast forward on those topics, feel free to keep watching this video. The nature of hash map is based on a key value pair. We need to somehow store these key values in a simple storage. But the question is how this is storage going to look like? This is not like array where we put elements into it and meanwhile the index of that element acts like a pointer to that value. The thing is these pairs has their own keys to refer to. For now let's say we store these keys into an array and when we call those array elements somehow some magic happens and we get the value back. One important thing about this array is the mapping between given keys and the array index because when we have a key value pair the end user of this hash map does not care about the underlying array or what we are doing behind the scene right? They just expect our hash map to give them back the stored value based on the key that they are asking for. So it is our job to make that magic happen. We need to find a way to map the given key into an element in that array we talked about and that is where the concept of hash function comes into play. The hash function does the mapping that we just talked about. There are multiple solutions for implementing hash functions but the simplest way is just a modulo operator. We give this array a rigid length, let's say 5. By the way these indices will act like placeholders for now and each time based on the key this modulo operator points us into one of those indices and that is how we are going to store key value pairs within, surprise surprise, an array. However, one important thing here is that this length might be a prime number, same as hash set video if you watch that one too. And the reason for that is, if we have some even or odd values as length, we will get more frequent maps into certain indices within this array, because that even length is going to be divisible to most of values within its coefficient. And more importantly, they are going to replace the old value that we stored there. And matter of fact, this is another point that I I will address it quickly but this scenario also happens with our prime number of 5 as well in here. I mean let's throw some key values to this hash map that their key is divisible by 5. Which index hash function redirect us to? Yes you are correct. Once more index 0 and it will remove the old value in that index. This issue with hash functions called hash collision where hash function returns the same index for multiple times which leads us to hotspots in our storage when distributing our data across that array. And of of course, prime numbers fixes that issue because they are only divisible by 1 and themselves. But keep in mind that even with choosing a prime number as length of or underlying array here, we might encounter hash collision again like this example as we discussed. When we reach to the max capacity of indices like this one here that all indices signed to a key value pair. So what are we going to do with it? Throw it away? No. There are two things to consider here. First is this is why it is better to choose as big prime number as you can while your memory limitations allows you in order to just reduce the hash collision as much as possible. The second thing is at the end of the day we know that we will hit that limitation and we will have a hash collision finally. So what are we going to do with it? The solution is we will give it a depth. Maybe I'm using wrong terminology here but you may ask how by having a linked list in each index of that array and currently you are just seeing the dummy head node for each of linked lists there. But we will store values in that index as a node to the linked list. And of course this will bring us some more complexity but next time when we try to store a key value like 997 which or hash function will return index 0 for it we are not going to replace any key value pair and we will simply append that key value to the tail of that linked list that sits in that location and that will happen for other values like so. Simply that way each node will be a depth to that index. Again exactly same as hash set video. By the 
way, this is only one way of tackling this issue. The other way is using a binary search tree, but it would be a bit more complex to implement it there. And keep in mind that it will give us a better logarithmic search time complexity. So let's see what we need to begin to implement the code. We need three things here. First is an array that will hold or linked lists. We will call them buckets. Second is the bucket itself, which will represent the linked list on each index. And lastly, a simple node for holding key value pairs, which will be the linked list nodes. Now, with that being clarified, let's jump into the code to implement it. First, we will start from writing the code for buckets structure, but since it's implemented based on a linked list, we need to build a single node for it. So a regular constructor function will do the job for us. The node function will receive and hold only three things, the key, the value, and the reference to the next node that it will point to in the linked list sequence. The next value will be null by default. So that was it for node. Now let's move to implementing bucket. This bucket will initially hold a dummy node as its head and it will help us in iterations through the linked list. Now this bucket function will have three methods on its prototype, add, delete, and find. We will start from find because we need to check if a value exists before inserting it and we are going to use it in add. To implement find method, it is just a simple linked list iteration to check every node value. I have a bunch of linked list videos. If you are interested, I'll put a playlist link in the description for you to check it out. But the only idea here is that we will hold a reference to a current node. And as long as that current node has the next value attached to it, we will keep asking its next value. And meanwhile, we will check the key of that node. And of course, if the given key is the same as our current node's key, we will return true because we find what we are looking for. But but we are not going to return a simple boolean like true. I will return an array which holds two things. First index will hold the value of the key value pair and second index will hold the boolean value indicating whether we find it or not. Otherwise, we will move to the next node. And finally, we will return negative one and false, meaning that we did not find what you are looking for. Okay, next is add method. Now the find method on buckets comes in to help us. So if a key does not exist in the bucket, then and only then we might create a node and add it to the bucket. So how do we know it? Remember that our find method returns two things. The second index is the boolean check we are looking for. Just note that for the created node, the next value will be the current head's next, which is null currently. And the current head will point to this node instead of null. And literally, we just squeeze the new node in between the dummy node and the null value that it was pointing to. Otherwise, if the given key already exists in our hash map, meaning if we get true as response from find method, we will do an update. And again, it's simple traversal and value update here. So last method on bucket, the delete method. For this, we will use the dummy head node to serve us as a prev variable initially and a current variable pointing to the next node of that dummy node, which in fact is the first real key value in the bucket. Then as long as current holds a node, we will do our search work to find the target key. And if we find a match, we will attach the current nodes next to the prev nodes next literally skipping the matched node and connecting its left and right neighbors together and return because we are done with removing that key value pair. Otherwise, we will move through the iteration and finally return null. Okay, now we have our fundamental structures in place. Now let's get right into implementing the hash map. Initially, we need to define the limitation or better say the size of our array that our hash map going to be based on. We will call it key range and assign it a prime number that is big enough to satisfy the limitation of this problem. And for that reason, we will choose the first prime number that comes before number thousand. Then we will create our buckets array and this array will be the same size of our key range. So we will do a loop as big as our key range to instantiate one bucket object in each in index of that bucket's array. Great, now we need to create our hash function. We will assign it to the prototype of my hash map variable to access it through this keyboard within other methods. And it will be the modulo of given key on the key range scale we defined earlier to map the given key to one of the indices in the bucket's array. So now we are so ready to create the real methods that is going to be tested. For put here, first we will try to find the index that we want to store the given key value pair 
and by using hash function we will map the given key to some index in buckets array and based on that index we know that every element in buckets array is a bucket object which has the add delete and find method available to us so we will use the add method of it and pass the key value pair to store and it is the same procedure for remove method as well first map the given key to some index in buckets array then use the delete method on the founded bucket Finally, get method. It is the same again, map a key to an index, then use that index to check existence of the given key. But remember, we return two things from find method. The first index was the value that key pointed to, and the second index was a boolean, meaning that if we found that key or not. This time, we need to return back the value that this key points to, since this is expected from get method. They are giving us a key, and we might return the value back. Well, that was it. Now, if I run this, test cases are passing, and if I submit, we are in a good shape here. Let's go back to Slice for time and space complexity analysis. So the time complexity will be O of n by k, n will represent the number of values and k will be the number of buckets, the same prime number we chose. Because if we assume that all given values are distributed over buckets evenly, then we might expect that time complexity because then, in the worst case, we need to scan the whole bucket nodes to find that target value that we are looking for. And the space complexity will be O of k plus m, which k will be the number of buckets and m will be the number of nodes we added to those buckets. So that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I will put a few more links about different playlists in the description for you to check it out. And finally, hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.